Hi, my name is Coco with BlackFilm.com. I'm here with Travis Mills and Ronnie Jones, host of the new MTV series, the new docu-series, actually, Help, I'm in a Secret Relationship. Thank you guys for joining me. Thanks Thank for having you. us. Thanks. Um, so I watched it. Um, it is quite the interesting show um, because we're not talking about necessarily a catfish situation where somebody's necessarily hiding their identity. They're sort of hiding their identity, but presenting, you know, with secrets. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah. I mean, I think the way that this differs from catfish is, you know, catfish, obviously people have never met um, in real life, right? It's someone kind of donning an identity that they use online and over the phone. Um, with this show, it's crazy because these people are face to face every day. They're going to sleep next to each other. They're waking up next to each other. They're, you know, going on dates and going to the movies, except there's this one big red flag hanging over the relationship, which is like, I haven't met your friends. I haven't met your family. I'm nowhere to be found on your social. Sometimes these people are together for two, three, four, five, six years yep. and they can't get their question answered, which is why Ronnie and I come in. Mm -hmm. So Ronnie, I'm going to ask you this because, mm -hmm. you know, I come from a family where like, you don't bring somebody home unless you're literally about to get married tomorrow, you know? So, <laughs> so culturally it just doesn't work like that in my family. So mm -hmm. it's very interesting because a lot of these so-called red flags, they weren't necessarily red flags to me, or even just the idea of necessarily being Instagram official. I mean, I know we live in that world, but what do you think about that? Like in terms of like, how deep are these things? Like, are they that important? Well, here's the thing with the social media, as, as we were going on, like the social media aspect of the not posting became less and less important because you do realize that some people just like their privacy yeah. and they have every reason to protect themselves and their relationship from outside forces that might have an opinion about something. I totally get that. As far as like, you know, you ain't meeting my family until, you know, <laughs> I'm getting married. I can respect that too. It's, it's, it's also just the fact that that person just has no idea that you even exist. Right, right. Like there's a level of, yeah, I have, I'm not going to uh, let you meet my mom or my dad, but mom and dad knows that I'm entertaining someone or, mm -hmm. or something like that. In this situation, it's just like, they have no idea that you exist. And mm -hmm. so I think that, that that's the level that we cross here where it's like that, that that's not acceptable. And also we've been together for like five, six years. So why have not, why have I not met a friend? <laughs> right, right, right. But you know my entire world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a pet, nothing. Like <laughs> <laughs> And and um uh, Travis, I just like the, the the care that you guys put into each of these stories. I mean, it's like you're not sensationalizing anything. You're really sitting down and talking to people. You're talking to their friends. Um, can you just get a little bit more into into why that mattered so much and to how you guys approach the show? I mean, I think it matters because these are people's real lives mm -hmm. in, in real relationships, you know. Um, you have to treat those things with, with care. You have to show up with empathy. Um, people are obviously exposing a lot of themselves. I mean, especially doing it in front of cameras, you know, it's really hard to be open and honest and vulnerable just sitting face to face with something. And then you add in the whole show element and, uh, you know, it, it multiplies it by tenfold. So for Ronnie and I, you know, we found ourselves spending a lot of time with these people and really kind of getting a behind the scenes into the relationship. And, you know, you really care, like you become a shoulder to lean on, you become a friend and you want to see these relationships succeed. Like we don't, we don't ever want to show up and, and break people up or, you know, cause more, more harm. Um, and, you know, sometimes, at the end of an episode, they walk away stronger and relationships are repaired and, you know, they go on to live happily ever after. Um, sometimes they don't. But, you know, one thing that Ronnie and I would say throughout the throughout the show is like, we hope we never see you guys again. Like, we <laughs> I hope you guys like get married and have kids. But like, hopefully you never call us again. <laughs> No, so you know, I, I want to talk about a particular episode, and I'm not getting into spoilers or anything. But let's just say with Vivi and DeAndre, I don't believe in that particular instance that the red flags have to be red flags. I think you know, obviously, a lot of times just honesty is the best policy. I don't think that would have been anywhere near as inflated or or really as critical if everything would have just been laid out on the line, just as it were. Absolutely, and yeah. and that's 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 the interesting thing about all of this, right? It's like you know. If you're doing the hiding, obviously there's a level of something that's eating away with you that you fear if the other person knew they would leave or they wouldn't understand. But these are things that we make up in our own mind, mm -hmm. right? You kind of take away the other person's uh, choice. Right. Like, 
I could have been okay with that. I could have been supportive of that. I could have helped you or whatever the situation is, but we kind of, we've learned that people kind of back themselves into a corner mm -hmm. um, out of their own doing. And then like you just said, if you were just been honest from jump, we wouldn't even be here because those wouldn't be deal breakers. But now you've compounded the situation with the lies and the secrecy and making me question myself is where right. our is messed up. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I was going for. We're thinking about where it's like, it became something where now I'm, I'm thinking like, is there something wrong with me? Not yes. even real. It never had to be like that. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, is secrecy really, I mean, is that just, is it ultimately a deal breaker? Do you think like, is that in and of itself? Uh, I, I think, you know, that is definitely like on a case by case basis, right? right? There are people that we sit down with. And, and the first question we ask is like, what are your deal breakers? You know, because mm -hmm. Ronnie and I are obviously going to get into some some digging and we're going to investigate, like we're going to come back and tell you everything we find. What are your deal breakers? Sometimes someone's like, if he's cheating, or you know, he or she's cheating, right. then I'm done. But anything else is pretty much okay and you're like well okay, okay. <laughs> I don't think so <laughs> you know and then, and then you have you know other relationships where people are like if they lied about one thing i'm out so it's it's really like on a case-by-case -case basis um as to what people will tolerate and you know how much understanding and, and compassion they're willing to show yeah and also I'm like what they think like what they think is a deal breaker and then you find out at the end they're like okay, well, I could forgive just because right. I love so much. So it's just, it, it, everything is kind of like in flux. Like as we were going, their deal breakers change, you know, they're more forgiving than they ever thought they could be. It's just, it's a fascinating um, psychological <laughs> ex exercise, exercise of such. Exactly. But, yeah. but see, I, I am, I'm far more uh, distrusting in that sense. Like my, my, like my, my deal breakers are not in flux. My, like I am very like headstrong. So if I'm like, this is a crazy thing to me, it's going to continue being a crazy thing. Like the love doesn't change the, the variables or like, oh, or move the goalposts, so to speak. But that's why you have your own show and you're not on our show. No, but no, but I, again, I love the show. I love it yeah. because you guys help people sort of work through their issues and then you help them confront whatever the problem is. Yeah, so that's, that's really interesting. And again, and I also, I want to talk about another episode. I, I really loved um, the Mia and Kayla episode as well because you guys really unpacked what was going on there. And again, it became something where there was a bigger, bigger, bigger issue at play that yeah. really had, again, nothing to do with the relationship itself. But it, it kind of ended up being something where we could all look at them and just really understand like just, just the humanness of, and everybody's process is just different. I really loved how that episode um, yeah. went about. That, mm -hmm. that one was truly probably one of the more emotional ones that, that that I experienced because mm -hmm. I could absolutely see myself in Mia. Mm -hmm. um, I had a situation that was similar. Obviously the, the parts are, are different, but it was very similar in terms of like, you know, I'm an out gay woman mm -hmm. and my, you know, I've been out for years now, but along that journey, I've had experiences where I've been with people who were not where I was um, in their journey. They were not out with their family or friends and didn't want me around mm. um, because I was the, you know, the expression of their sexuality, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it, that was a hard pill for me to swallow because I'm thinking like, I'm a good person. I'm, I mean, if you just let me, let me into your circle that mm -hmm. I promise you'll be proud of me. Um, but you know, it, it hurts your feelings. It makes you doubt yourself. Uh, and so when I saw Mia, as soon as she's, she, as soon as she started crying, I was like, Oh my Lord. Yeah, no, I, I felt that. No, that was, yeah. And then, and then you, you know, you, you we get, we get to know Kayla at some point, but it, it just a very, universal thing in the lgbtq plus community and i just hope that when people watch this show that they obviously know that they're getting some chaos and some mess but they are these are real stories and they are profound stories mm -hmm. and um i hope that there's a level of education that can be had when they see um, um other types of love i'm glad you said that I, because I, there is there there's the chaos mess element but i don't think it's a messy show it's not mm. right. So that that's that's the thing that I think that that does uh, that does distinguish it from a lot of different shows. I mean, there's there's something for every you know whatever you're you're interested in at that particular hour. Mm. But I don't think it's a messy show because you come away from it just learning something. And I do feel like every interaction and every episode that I saw kind of made me learn and sort of ruminate about things about within myself 
That's why I was like, that was, I don't know about that. My deal breakers, I'm just like, this show done taught me. I just, you know, I got to get out of here. So, no. Um, but, um, you know, ultimately, you know, what, what do you guys want people to, to learn or to know about the show that they should take away? I think people are going to watch the show and, and, you know, realize that if you are going through a similar experience, you're not alone, right? This is something that happens every day. It happens all over the world. Um, and it's obviously something that's, hard for people to talk about, right? It can be embarrassing. You can feel like no one understands. And, you know, you don't want to be like, hey, I, I'm in love with this person, but they won't introduce me to their family or their mm -hmm. friends. Like that is extremely isolating. So I, I hope people watch this and realize that they're not alone, that there's a way to get out of it. And there's a way to set boundaries and change your circumstances. Um, and then I also think it's going to be a revelation for a lot of people where they watch it and they're like, I'm in one of those relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ryan? Um, I would like to echo Travis. I think that uh, what I hope that the viewers will see is that no one deserves to be put in a situation where they are lied to and kept a secret. You know, mm. no one deserves to be someone's unknown. Mm. You know, you are more than that. Um, mm. And, you know, just finding a sense of empowerment to be able to speak your truth and how you're feeling and communicating strongly um, mm -hmm. and with purpose. That's what I hope a lot of people mm -hmm. will take away if they find themselves in situations like this and don't feel like they want to have a TV camera on them to try and figure this out. Like right. maybe yeah. they will, you know, approach their situations differently and with, you know, um, understanding and compassion, but forcefulness to talk about some real stuff. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said earlier, too. Like you said, as, as the show goes on, you kind of realize maybe the social media aspect is not as important. But to your point, really, it's no one should have to question their reality. No, I think that's really. Yeah. That, like that's 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 the overarching theme here. And I think yeah. you guys do a really excellent job of just making us sort of understand like what that means. You know, so I, I, I appreciate a show like this and with the particular angle that you guys take. It is entertaining. But um, thank you. <laughs> it's definitely educational. So I, I know you guys um have have a bit to do today. Um, I'm kind of just like wedging myself into your schedules. But again, <laughs> my name is Coco with Blackdome.com, and I'm here with Travis Mills and Ronnie Jones, host of the new MTV series, new the docu series again. Help! I'm in a secret relationship. It's coming out Tuesday, April 26th um, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and um, it's great. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. It's a nice, it's a nice new and refreshing angle. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you guys for, for having me. Um, have a oh. good one. <laughs> yeah, you as well. Have a great day. You too. Take care. <laughs> if you want to see more content like this on blackfilm.com, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell.